Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at one of the newer things in Adobe Muse which is called in-browser editing. Now in-browser editing is actually not new to Muse, it's had it for a while. But uh, in the past it only worked if your site was hosted with Adobe's Business Catalyst. You know, you get that as part of your Creative Cloud membership. However, now your site can be hosted anywhere, anywhere you can FTP your site and you can allow your client to make basic changes to their site, text and images, nothing else, um, without having to bother you every single time. So if you've got that client where you design the site and you wanna keep control over the overall design of the site, but you don't wanna be bothered with every little minute change that they wanna to make to their text and images day to day, then you can allow them to make those changes with a simple web browser using in-browser editing. Let's take a look at how to set it up and how it works. So here I am, I'm the author, I'm here in Muse, and I've got a site for my client, Katie's Cafe. So for example, let's open up the menu for Katie's Cafe, and Katie just called me and said, hey, the uh, Spike Breakfast, you know, we had a, a price increase, uh, that needs to go to $13 instead of 12, and or maybe $14. There we go. So I've made the change and you know, it's like, Katie, you're calling me with these changes every five minutes, every couple days, every day. And you don't want to pay for those changes that I'm having to make because uh, the cost is probably more than you want to pay. So I'd rather give you the ability to make these changes going forward. So I'm going to go ahead and make that one change to, to the spike for $14. We'll go ahead and close this. Um, uh, we'll close the pages that I have open and we'll go ahead and upload via FTP the changes. So it will connect with the server. Uh, it's letting me know where it is. I'm going to say yes, only upload the modified files and then it will go ahead and make those changes on the web. So it's logging in, checking, doing everything it needs to do and uploading the changes to the menu. So that way I'm, I'm starting off with the most current site that I have made changes to for Katie to continue to make changes to going forward. And here we are. Um, so it's got a nice site with scroll effects. And again, I don't want Katie messing any of this up, but if she wants to change her story or awards or swap out a photo here and there, um, I'm, I don't mind that at all. And of course, if we head over to the menu and we look at the spike, um, it should say now that it's $14 and it does. Okay, great. Now from here on out, I want Katie to be able to make changes going forward. So I'm going to go back to Muse just for a split second. Uh, Muse is letting me know the changes have been uploaded. I'm going to go ahead and save my version of the site. So it's saved with the last things that I've done to it. Now I can quit Muse, leave Muse. I don't have to keep Muse open for this. I'll leave it open just because we're going to come back to it in a minute. But I'm done. Now what I want to do is... I would go and on my hosting um, provider, I would set up another FTP account because I don't want to give her my main one, my, my password. I would set up one for Katie. So I'd set up a different user pointing to the same folder wherever her site is set up on with her, her a username and password via FTP via my hosting provider for Katie. I would then give Katie that username and password. Next thing I would do is I would point Katie to a special web page, a special um, page that we've set up for Muse uh, called inbrowserediting.adobe.com. That's where you send your client to be able to go and make their changes to their website no matter where it is on the, on the web. So in-browser editing, here let me zoom in on it so you can actually see it, inbrowserediting.adobe.com. The login will come up automatically. Okay, so now Katie would basically just copy and paste her URL or type it in to that, to that site and then start editing. And then it would come up and find that site no matter where it's hosting, whoever's hosting it, and say, okay, what's the username and password? This is where Katie puts in that FTP username and password that you gave her to her site. All right, so let's go ahead and sign in. And what Katie sees in her browser is her site. She sees it just the way it looked on the web. The only difference is, as Katie scrolls down, if she wants to change something, 
There is now an edit box over each item, including the photos. So she can go in, click, and edit any of the text, any of the photos, but she can't add pages, change pages, delete pages, move things on the pages. It's just for doing simple changes. So I want to um, navigate to the menu because Katie, um, Katie has uh, figured out that the Dazzler uh, we can actually lower the price on the Dazzler if we take out one of the ingredients and, and people are more health conscious these days anyway. So let's go ahead and click edit and we're going to lower the price of the Dazzler down to $7 because we're going to take out sausage. We don't need sausage and locally sourced bacon. So we can drop the price of that by removing one of the ingredients and our customers will be happier and healthier, a little bit healthier. So let's go ahead and update that. Now she can continue making changes on this page. Once she's done, she would then click publish. In other words, I'm done making my changes. I want to make these changes now live on the web. She clicks publish and you get the little success message. And now if we go back to her regular site, not in in browser editing and we click on the menu. I get that little pop up sometimes, but we click on the menu and we now see the Dazzler is $7 with the sausage now removed from the description. So that's it. That's all she has to do is anytime she wants to make changes, middle of the night, first thing in the morning, when I'm out of town, doesn't matter. She can just log into in browser editing, uh, um, in browser editing .adobe and make the changes on her site. When she's done here, she can go ahead and just sign out and it will take her right back to the in browser page. So any of your customers go to this portal, sign in with their credentials that you assign them, make the changes on their site. All they want as often as they want and publish them live without having to bother you. Now, what happens when you need to make changes? You need to go back and do it in Muse, of course. Let's head back over to Muse. And had I not had this site open, when I would open it the next time, it would alert me that changes have been made outside of Muse. And this is the case here, where Katie went off and made some changes that I don't know about. She's been doing it all day, all night, all week, whatever. So now I come back and I would just simply say, you know, I got the feeling she's been making changes sync with the web version. When I do this, it will go out and look at what's on the web and then show me in context any changes that have been made and allow me to make those same changes into Muse. So I can say merge into Muse. I can see where the Dazzler changed from $9 to $7, uh, took out the word sausage. So it's showing me here where the changes have been made and giving me the choice to bring those changes down into my site or not. I can veto those changes in other words. But if I do that, the next time I upload, upload the site, it's gonna overwrite whatever she's done. So since it's her site, I'm pretty good with whatever changes she's made. I'm gonna go ahead and say merge all remaining changes. And now I have the latest version of Katie's Cafe that I will now save. And I can continue working on design, adding pages, doing things to the site and Katie is happy because she can make the text changes and graphic changes that she needs to make. She can replace photos. She can uh, change the text. She can uh, change the prices whenever she feels like it and her site is up to date. So that's how to use in browser editing with Adobe Muse, even if the site is not hosted with Adobe, it can be hosted on any FTP provider. All you have to do is give your client an FTP login to get to their site and then they can make those changes. Hope you learned something. We'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.